Hi. This video is all about the features that we can see on bivalves, common fossils and ones that are frequently asked in A-level geology exams, because of the wealth of information that we can find within the fossils. So bivalves are invertebrate mollusks. These are animals that live inside uh, two shells, or the proper word for them is valves. The shells are made of calcite and create a, a very strong protective um, container for the animal. It grows by adding uh, extra bits to the edge of its shell continuously over time by extracting calcite dissolved in seawater and secreting it to make its shell. Bivalves um, are still exist today. They're really quite abundant today. Um, you may well, you've probably eaten some bivalves in the forms of mussels or scallops or even oysters, and have been around since um, the Cambrian period. They filter feed. They open their shell, suck in uh, seawater, filter out the organic material they need. Uh, and excrete uh, the rest. You can also get some um, sort of predatory ones as well. Now, bivalves are perhaps the fossil that we need to, or one of the two fossils really, I suppose, we need to take most care with identifying. Because there are two groups of fossils that you need to be able to identify that both have evolved the same solution uh, to life, having two hinged shells. Now, as a general rule, the way we can tell them apart is that bivalves have a plane of symmetry between the two shells. So the shells themselves, or each individual shell, has no symmetry, but the two shells together are symmetrical between the two shells. This is different from brachiopods. Now, it's worth mentioning that there are exceptions to this rule. Um, for example, oysters. They don't follow this rule at all. Uh, neither do scallops. But as a general rule of thumb, it's not a bad one to start with. There you can see uh, on the rough sketch, on the right, where the plane of symmetry runs. As I said, we can see bivalves living in lots of different environments uh, alive today. It means we can understand a lot about their uh, ecology um, and their mode of life. We can see examples like cockles, for example, uh, who live buried just beneath the surface uh, of the mud in uh, places around Wales, for example. Um, we see the razor clam, who burrows deeply uh, into sand and mud. Oysters that are fixed to the seabed, as are the giant clams. And mussel shells, which attach themselves to rock by these strong um, bissel threads, we, uh, we call them. Okay, like these fibres uh, that attach them to rocks so they can resist the movement of the waves. Now, a razor clam, we can see top right, has a couple of features that are worth making a, a note of. The first of these is a gape. When a razor clam's uh, two shells are together, there's a large gap at the top and the bottom of the shells. This is to allow um, the razor clam's uh, foot to extend out the bottom of the shell so it can dig very quickly deep into the mud and at the top end of the shell then it can extend a feature called a siphon. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But there it's an adaptation uh, for burying itself quickly and deeply within sediment. Another feature of the razor shell, it's very obvious, is the very long hinge line. Now a hinge line we see on any uh, bivalve 
That's where the two shells are actually joined together. So the shells can give us lots of clues about how they lived. So thick ridge shells um, are, have adapted to uh, strong currents, strong uh, waves, perhaps in tidal areas. Uh, a cockle would be a good example of that. Uh, these curved long shells okay, um, need to be able to cope with uh, strong currents. Also, uh, they attach themselves to the rock. Where we see very flat uh, and lightweight shells, perhaps that are made stronger by uh, corrugations in them, like the scallop, um, they swim. A, a heavy, heavy, thick shell would be a big disadvantage for an animal um, that needs to move itself around quickly. Some of these bivalves have this muscular foot, this muscle that comes out of the bottom of the shell and can be used to dig or move itself around. Okay, perhaps to protect itself. Or it may have uh, this feature we call uh, a siphon. Now the siphon is a feature that is unique to the burrowing bivalves. There are other features you can see on burrowing bivalves. Long, smooth shells, uh, perhaps very thin shells that will let, let it slip itself through the mud quite easily. But this siphon uh, is a very clever adaptation. I suppose it, it's like a snorkel for a bivalve. So if it buries itself within the mud, it can extend this siphon back up to the surface, as we can see in the picture on the left-hand side here, uh, and use that to uh, draw water in with its food and to excrete water out with its waste. Now we can actually see... Um, Evidence of this, even though it's a soft part, preserved in the fossils. If you look at the image in the, at the bottom, you can see there are two muscle scars. This is the place where the muscles that control the opening and closing of the shell are attached to the inside of the shell. And there's a line that marks the edge of the body. We call it the paleal line. On a burrowing bivalve, though, you can see there's a big indentation in this line. That's where the siphon would be withdrawn within to the shell. So it's not attached to the, uh, um, to the inside of the shell in the same way that the rest of the body is. This is a feature called a paleal sinus and is indicative of a burrowing mode of life. So if we compare two shells, we've got some uh, features that we can recognise on both of them. Firstly, we have what we call the umbo. The umbo is the oldest part of the shell where the bivalve um, started to grow and started to secrete its shell. We also see on the inside of the shell the teeth and sockets, not for chewing up food, but for locking the two shells together to make the, uh, the hinge between them much stronger. On the inside of the shells then, we can identify the muscle scars. Most bivalves have two muscle scars, but not all. Uh, oysters, for example, just have one big muscle. Joining the two uh, muscle scars on both of these fossils is the paleal line, marking the edge of where the body is attached to the inside of the shell. But you can see the one on the right has a difference in its paleal line. It has this paleal sinus this indentation in the paleal line. And that indicates very clearly that this particular fossil is a burrower. So, we can interpret a great deal about the environment in which these animals live. Partly as a result that we see um, modern uh, bivalves so we can apply uniformitarianism directly to this. But that tells us uh, what the shell features that we've seen are, the rock type that we find them in, and also how they're preserved. Bivalves have um, 
a great variety in their modes of life. We find them in lots of different um, settings. There are several here shown on this sketch. Can you identify what these might be? So, to conclude, bivalves are abundant and diverse fossils. By looking carefully at the features that we see in their shells, we can interpret a great deal about their mode of life, how they actually um, came up with solutions to the challenges uh, of life. They're an interesting uh, and diverse group. Anyway, don't forget to come up with your interesting question and bring it along to class. I'll see you then.